Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for another episode of UNESCO Talks. I'm your host, Gabby Menezes. Our guest today is Melanie D. Parker, who is Vice President of Googler Engagement. With over three decades of working in human resources, Melanie is here to talk to us about building workplace culture and why it's important that women work in tech. Melanie, thank you so much for joining us. So my first question is, could you maybe explain to us what does it mean to be vice president of Googler Engagement and how did you get started? It's such a great question, especially because it says Googler Engagement, which is probably a word you don't hear that often. It really means employee engagement. So it's about that emotional connection that employees have to work. And we call our Google employees Googlers so that's why it's the vice president of Googler engagement, which is really to ensure that we're um, connecting Googlers to our company mission, but also to each other. And I really started in this work through my long career in human resources. So just a variety of roles um, in human resources leadership, like managing teams, bringing talent together, um, looking at like the talent pipelines and how those pipelines really matriculate through the company. And all of those experiences really led me to leading employee engagement at Google, which I'm really excited about. So I guess a lot of your work is about building a workplace culture and also attracting the right people to Google. I'm sure our audience would love to know more about it is, so you really nailed it. Uh, what I would add to it is we're looking across like the employee life cycle. What are the moments that matter across your career? So that attraction part, our employer brand, what do people think about when they think about working at Google and then going through the hiring process? And then what we want to make sure is that social construct, that implied promise of what it means to have career at Google, that we're fulfilling that through just the culture and the experience, through development, the experiences that you have to develop um, personally as well as professionally. And then what happens from a progression standpoint? How, how is that career gonna go? Is it linear? Are you gonna go up, sideways, all around? Because all those things are possible. And then when you're ready to leave Google, what does that look like? Whether you're retiring or leaving Google to go do something else, we wanna make sure that we've identified all those moments that matter and are delighting you through each of those experiences. So it's really about retention. I'm super curious, um, is it possible to start in one role at Google and then move to something that's really quite different? It is, so a great example, um, there's a Google employee who worked in human resources. And she actually had an interest um, in software development, but didn't have a background in it at all. She used Google's tuition um, education reimbursement program, went back, got her degree, found mentors over in um, the software development organization, and she moved from working in HR to um, now she's a software developer. So that's just like a tremendous example. That really is yeah. quite an astonishing example. And I'm sure our audience will have this question. Do you have any advice for people who want to come and work for Google? I do. So one, on YouTube, there are a number of videos that talk about like the experience at Google. And so they're under a banner called um, Life at Google. So that's um, one great way just to start getting familiar. And then you can also go on our careers website, submit your resume, and then there's lots of information online. Um, and then there's so many Google employees, you know, just feel free to connect with one of us on LinkedIn or your favorite social media site. And what is the workplace culture like at Google? Very vibrant. So it's a very vibrant culture. Our workspaces um, are very colorful and they're designed for collaboration. They're open so you don't see as many walls. You see more open spaces with lots of light, lots of colors, and lots of spaces where um, you can gather in large groups or small groups. And there are video conference rooms all around where you can take small meetings, connect with someone in a different part of the world, 
across time zones. And you can do that one-on-one -on -one, or you can do that with a group. And then the outdoor spaces um, are the same way. And then special treat. You could actually bring your dog to work and there's a place for your dog to play when you need to uh, take your dog out. So there's um, meetups for the dogs too. Well, that's definitely <laughs> a perk and that not many it offices is. have. That's right. Um, and what I wanted to speak more about is how we get more women into tech companies and what you think about that. Uh, UNESCO has just launched a campaign where we're trying to get people to imagine what the world would be like if we had more women in science. And I wondered if I could get your thoughts. I think we have to normalize um, what it means to work in science and how exciting the careers in science are and really um, engage young girls from a very early age, put them in those environments so that um, when they think about the faces of who's in science, they see their face too. So I think that's critically important, making it fun, um, ensuring as parents and mentors to young girls, um, ensuring that you're putting them in hackathons and other types of events that are oriented that way. Um, and now there's so many ways to think about like coding. There's coding in a box. Many places have those types of things available. Because even if coding or computing isn't taught in school, there are organizations that provide those types of experiences. And so I think we have to better embed and integrate those experiences, show how fun they really are, how interesting the critical problem solving that goes along with that to really inspire girls to enter into those fields. Definitely, I think one of the barriers is that girls aren't encouraged to enter into science or engineering from a young age. But do you have any advice for women who maybe have gone into university to study science? What can they do to really um, enter into a big company like Google? So internships are a number one way to do this, like get experiences, like come to Google. We employ um, literally thousands of interns across our global campuses around the world. Um, and so that is an ex outstanding way to really have practical, hands-on experience. The other thing I recommend a lot is mentoring. Find someone who's actually doing that type of role and ask them to mentor. And not just one, you want a lot of mentors because you want to get a wide array of experiences because that type of exposure is really going to help inform like what you like but also what you don't like and both of those help you get closer to the types of things you like to do. And is Google looking for a wide skill set? Is there anything that would be particularly attractive from a candidate? So there's a wide array of talent that we look for. Um, and we look for experience in lieu of degree as well. Um, and one other thing I'd love to point out is that we have Grow with Google career certificates that Google and over 150 employers accept. So it's grow.google.com. You can get um, anything from AI essentials to data analytics. So there's a suite of coursework that's on the Casera platform, self-paced learning for people who want to change career, add to the skill set, or even just to you know get a certificate in lieu of degree. All of those are available. Why come to Google? Because it's a great place to work. We offer meaningful work. We offer um, a career across many different locations, lots of products, lots of experiences, and lots of great people that really want to pour into you. And so the uh, Grow with Google certificates, are those available outside um, of the company? Oh, they are. So they are available outside of the company. So the website is grow.google.com. And there's a suite of career certificates that are available um, on your own time that are self-paced at no cost. Um, and over 150 employers, as I said, accept those certificates. So many people um, are taking these um, certificate programs and they're finding uh, new roles, new experiences. 
that's I'm sure going to be very interesting for a lot of our audience. So we've gone through young age and attracting girls into science and entry level people, but how about mid-career women? Um, do you have any advice as a leader in a tech company to give to women who are, w who are wanting to make that leap? Yes, so, and uh, let me take myself as an example. Um, I have three children, my youngest uh, are twins, so I have twin sons, and I was out of the workplace uh, for a little bit of time. I stayed home with them until they were about three years old, and so just re-entering the workforce, you know, it's, it could be a little bit daunting, uh, but there are so many skills that I learned while I was managing like three kids, two babies, at the same time, and I had to think about how to translate those skills into action around organizing, like strategy, the acumen, with the skills that I already had. Um, and I really worked to gain as many experiences as I could when I went back into the workplace. So it's all the things that we do every day really culminate into skills that you can use across your career we just have to kind of take some time to translate like those actions into behaviors and into the competencies. So if you don't mind me asking, how did that personally work for you? Did you sort of say it openly on your CV that you felt that being a mother had given you all of these additional skills and experience? I listed homemaker hmm. on my resume. And I, I can't remember now like the skill set, but I listed it with the year. So my resume was like a chronological um, order but I put homemaker on there, but I talked about <clears throat> like what it meant to have, um, like I, there's seven years difference between my twins and my daughter, but just to have like school age child, like twins, all that it took to make, manage the household and the varying needs across those ages. I talked about that um, in the context of career. And so I worked in public relations before I stayed home with the twins. When I came back into the workforce, I went into human resources. It's actually where I started my human resources career. Well, that's certainly an inspiring example. And yes, I think that we need so much, so many skills to, to be a mother and definitely mm -hmm. multitasking is one of them. Oh yes, and Brene Brown helped us out with you know really normalizing that soft skills are hard skills. And for so many women, um, there's so many soft skills that we've acquired just over our lifetime, but recognizing that those are hard skills that really contribute to, you know, teams that are, you know, motivated, bringing people together, um, problem resolution, like all of the things that we do from a soft skill standpoint are very important in the context of the workplace. Thank you so much, Melanie, for taking the time to chat with us. It's been super interesting. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for another episode of UNESCO Talks. As always, please leave your comments and questions